This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Harley Race. This is Mick Foley. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. This is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Right now with the one and only Lalani Kai. You know, former WWE women's and tag team champion, the one, the only. Her and Mula went back and forth. I'll tell you, she's the best in the business. Let's give her a hearty welcome to MWF. Well, welcome aboard, Miss Lalani Kai. Oh, thank you. I'm very glad to be on your show. Well, it's an honor to have you here, believe me as not only the guy that's at MWF having fun here and getting the chance to interview some of the superstars, it really is my honor to be talking to you. I remember watching you on that TV, watching you do your thing, and I must say, you are a credit to the profession and to women's wrestling. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I worked real hard and trained, you know, as hard as I could. I've been wanting to do this since I was like 15, 16 years old, and I knew that was the way I was heading. So I've, um, I've had a, a great career, <laughs> and I'm happy now, and I'm, um, I'm excited about doing a lot more uh, ventures and, uh, in the business. And uh, I've been training some, and I've been uh, on the road uh, working, like, you know, different locations up in New Jersey and California and going to different schools and just trying to stay a little active in it. Well, I hope I've someday we cross myself. paths. That would be fun. Um, I, I'd like to bring something up that perhaps you'd like to elaborate on a little bit more. I understand that you are in the process of opening up your own school. Oh, yes. It's, uh, it's, it's called the Triple Four Wrestling Academy, and um, it's, it's in a great location in Central Florida. Um, it's a very detailed training program. It's co-ed and... Uh, I specialize in women, so I've got a male trainer, and uh, myself as a female trainer, and I do both men and the women, and uh, so does Steve Stasek, he's the other trainer, and we have our president, uh, Robert Mann, he's been working on this for a long time, like three years, he's been building onto the school, and it's really nice, and uh, I'm so excited, and it's actually gold and black in the Glamour Girl colors. <laughs> Wow. And we're all in a partnership, so it's, uh, I'm excited, and I hope to get soon some students that might, you know, might want to come in for some training, and I'm excited about it. I cannot see why you cannot. I, I can't imagine you not getting any students when they have, to, especially with the young female wrestlers today, or those wanting to get into the business, to have the opportunity to train with yourself. That would be a mistake on their part not to be able to have the knowledge, expertise that you would pass on to them, showing them what professional wrestling for women is really all about. Um, I have a question for you, though. Uh, a young woman coming into the business today or wanting to get into the business today, what kind of tips or information would you pass on to them? Having, you know, you started there and worked your way up, what would you give them as advice today, like if a young woman came and said, I want to be in the professional wrestling business today. How do I start? Where do I begin? And what kind of advice could you give me? Uh, it's got to be in your heart. It was in my heart. And uh, it's, it's a long road. It's not easy. I think that, you know, training and wrestling, the bumps are very hard. It's the hardest thing was for me to start out. Um, uh, I, I, would, I, was, I would just... I'll recommend it because it's a great career for anyone that wants to get into it. It's, it's gotten very huge in the last uh, 20 years. It's a little different than when I started because I started with an all-women's uh, uh, school at Moolis. It wasn't like poet or anything like that. So, uh, But uh, I, I would suggest getting into it if you really want it that bad. And uh, if you're a great athlete and you've got ambition, I, I would suggest it. 
And I'd say, come to me, you know, <laughs> because I will train the right way, you know, the way I was trained. And I'm very old school. And and uh, I, 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 I traveled around and saw lots of schools. And there's a lot of great schools out there. But um, I'm just specializing in women right now. And I know that a lot of them have to train with guys. And, and it's a, a, a man's world in wrestling. And I just think that... Um, if the women wanted to get into it and they really wanted it, I would just suggest uh, get in contact with me, and I'll do the best I can to get them on their start. I think that your answer is one that I support, uh, and I'm happy to hear when you say that you'll be training women with women because so many of the schools today are trained as though they were gentlemen, as men, in the wrestling business. And there's two different ways of training. Not, and again, I've said this a million times, I think there's some women out there uh, involved in professional wrestling, and obviously the late fabulous Mueller and Mae Young, I'd put them both in the same category, could probably kick a lot of those guys' asses. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> well, it, was, it was tough back then. and um, My role models were girls back in the 50s and 60s, and um, I know pr quite a bit about the history of wrestling. It's not like I just jumped right into it. I, I, I did my homework, and and I'm, I am old school, and um, uh, Lula was tough. She was. She had a tough school, and everybody she had in her school were all uh, wonderful athlete uh, women, and we all worked together, and we did territorial-type uh, um, travels. Like, we'd go to one place for, like, two weeks, and then we'd go to another place for two weeks, and it's not like that anymore. It's just everything's kind of spread out, you know, and... Everybody has, like, their own uh, little corporation or um, their academies and, and their uh, events. So it's, it's a little different today. It's a struggle, but it's well worth it. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like training with the fabulous one herself, fabulous Mueller? What kind of trainer was she? Was she demanding? Was she hard? Um, how difficult was it? To work with her, um, she was very tough. Um, she come out there many times. Uh, we worked out with each other. Once she trained, and and I and I believe in that. I believe when you uh, train somebody and they get and then they start training with somebody else, it's, it's uh, not as far advanced as they are. Uh, helps everybody along, you know. Um, Mula had a very strict training and very strict time of training, and uh, it, it wasn't real easy, but it was it was well worth it in the long run. And um, actually, when I first started, I would already kind of knew my, my bumps already, my falls. And um, I was living in Florida in Tampa, and I went to a school called um, uh, Wolfman Jack, I think. I went there for like two weeks, and I kind of learned my bumps some. And then I, I got with the Fabulous Mullis, and it was the best school I can probably go to. And I went there, so I was a little more advanced. And once I got started, it wasn't maybe two or three weeks before I was already on the road. And I went to Alaska for my first trip. And I went with somebody that um, started the same time as I did, and, and we just got out there and did what we were taught. You know, Mula was pretty strict, and she was at that um, uh, a, a good trainer. You know, her school is the best you can go to and probably the only one to go to. So um, I, uh, I, 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 um, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to um, go to Fabulous Mula's school and, and train there and and be around the the girls there and, and be on the road with them. And it wasn't no really no men involved. So it was a little different back then. I trained with men. Uh, I eventually went to Japan, and I stayed in Japan so much. I went back and forth. Oh, I, it must have been 47 times, and I stayed there a lot and went to Mexico. And in Japan, I trained over there, too, and I trained with Japanese male wrestlers over there some and uh, with Carl Gotch a couple of times, and that was very exciting to me. Because um, I don't think he really cared for women's wrestling, but you know he gave me a little bit of a chance, and I got to practice with him some. And um, so that's where I got a lot of my training, also. And that's when the glamour girls came into the picture, you know, uh, doing that kind of a style. And so uh, I've I've had a hard road. <laughs> <laughs> well, Very I don't think it's one, easy. I'd never take it back. <laughs> you know what? I think if you love what you do. And it, you certainly did. It showed in the matches, at least the ones that I saw. It, it ex, it's exuded it in your explanations of what professional wrestling is and what you do. Um, 
I, I, I want to know one thing, though. You talk about training, and I understand that you have a trainee, that you're exceptionally, I don't know, what do I want to put? Um, looking, Marshall, too. <laughs> yeah, that's a good word. That she has a great future ahead of her in this professional wrestling business. What's your what's your take? Why is she, why has she been the one that you're so partial to out of all the other students that you have? Uh, when I was in California, we uh, were out there for a company called Wow with David McLean, and um, a lot of ladies come up for tryouts. And after like about a week of the tryouts. Um, uh, the other trainer, uh, Steve Stasiak, and myself thought that um, that Tata uh, was probably one of the best athletes there, and she really had it in her heart that she wanted to do this. And she's really the, like the very ever the very first Armenian ladies wrestler, you know, to um, step into the ring. And um, I've never seen anyone multi talented in our business as she is. Um, she's a, a legitimate actress. Yuki Kaido Khan kickboxer and Argentina tang kind of dancer and she's a dedicated wrestler and uh, not to mention one of the most beautiful women in the world in my opinion. So um, she has it in her heart to do this and I have um, uh, I think it's April 12th. I'm um, in West Virginia and I'm actually going to wrestle against her and I think that that would be a, a good lesson for her and. And I'm a teacher. She's a student. And I've had a lot of um, fans ask me to have a match against her. And it's for the ASW um, Anniversary in Medicine uh, Civic Center for Gary Dameron. He's a very good friend of mine, and I thought that uh, his event would be the best place to start off uh, having a match with my student. And uh, it'll help, you know, teach her uh, the ways, you know, in the ring and the the psychology, and, and, and uh, she's had a few matches, but I just thought it would help her a great deal if she went against her teacher. I think it's a great idea. I she's think so, too. She's a wonderful person and a great athlete, and she's uh, great with uh, weaponry, and um, I'm just really proud of her. And uh, I wish her the best in her career, and I'm, I like to help her as much as I can, and she's been very dedicated, and, and um, I'm, I'm happy to have her in, in my uh, corner. <laughs> Wow, I, I can I, I wish I could see the match, but I, I always like it when I hear the student versus the teacher. And I, I, I was just down in Florida, as a matter of fact. I was down there, this, and we had a chat about you and a few other people, and Devon was there. Uh, and it was funny because he went up against one of his students, and it was kind of funny. Devon came back with a sweat, and the student came back and couldn't breathe. So we'll see how it works out between you and she, and I'm sure it will be a fabulous match. Um, oh, I'm sure it will. But she's um, she's a, a great person and a great athlete, and I, I like to, you know wrestle against great athletes. You know, she might teach me something. You know, so uh, you know. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I think I, I'm. It's great to hear that all of us, and I include myself, have an open mind because when we get in that squared circle or we get involved in a show and we think we know it all, that's when we find out that we might have missed just a little bit of something and somebody else teaches us one that we should have known already. So I certainly offer up my best to her. I hope she makes it to the big time, to the WWE, TNA. Um, she certainly sounds dedicated. Uh, and with a trainer like you, I don't know how she could miss. Um, Aw, well, she had a, 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 the mail trainer, Steve Stasiak. Um, he's my booker. He books out like Vader and Rocky Johnson, uh, Mike McGurk, and um, he uh, did a lot of training with her too. So she got both of both deals, you know, and, and um, so he he picks a lot of uh, talent out. And he's on Facebook.com, Booker Pro Wrestlers now, hmm. and um, he's a very good trainer too. And he's got also in the training uh, with us at the academy, at the Triple Four Wrestling uh, Academy and for the males. And I think it's going to work out really well, and um, I'm excited. Uh, I've been waiting for a long time to, uh, to be able to start at a school and, and, and give my knowledge of what I've learned through all these years. You know, I just want to spread it out, you know, because I'm proud of it. And uh, I worked very, very hard. I'm not the best, mind you, and I'm not the most beautiful, but I did, you know, learn a lot, and it's a sport that I love very much and protect. 
So <laughs> that's good. And you know what? I, I don't think it's about beauty. I don't think because I think that's what's happened in the world of women's wrestling today. It's not about wrestling anymore. It's about who's the prettiest and how much can we show. Um, and I think we've lost that. What do I want to say the days of women's wrestling. Um, and I don't mean to be derogatory towards any of the young women today because they certainly, when you watch some of these young women today, can truly wrestle. I mean, you take a look at Natalia, you take a look at Victoria, uh, Nikki Bella, uh, you take a look at AJ. Some of these women are out there, and they can really, really perform. Um, so, uh, you know what? You've made your mark in this business. You did it the hard way. Nobody gave you anything. So I'd like to ask you a couple more questions, if I may. Um, oh, sure, honey. All right. Why don't you do us a favor and let's you and I take a walk down memory lane and let's take, take us back to March 31st, 1985. I believe that was WrestleMania One at Madison Square Garden. My question to you would be, what was the atmosphere like at the inaugural event that turned into a worldwide phenomenon, and what was your memory or memories of wrestling Wendy Richter with Cindy Lauper in her condo. That must have been tough. Uh, it was tough. Um, when I arrived, I had been on the road, and I think I was overseas. I, uh, I arrived like two days before the event. I didn't really realize um, how big it was going to be. Um, I'd been in Madison Square Garden, you know, three or four times prior to that, and uh, when I got there... Everything was going crazy. It was very organized, uh, very professional, but it was just crazy. Uh, uh, guys were in one room doing interviews, um, others in uh, another room. Just, just Everybody was just going crazy there, and uh, TV cameras. And I didn't realize uh, how big it was. And then I was standing in the hallway, and I didn't know there were celebrities there. <laughs> and uh, Liberace walked by, and he stopped talking to me. I was just... Uh, propagasted. <laughs> oh, well, I just couldn't believe it. You know, he, he was there, and that was exciting for me because I was uh, so fatuated, you know, and seeing uh, him at the event. And but um, it it went real well. I just uh, remember trying to get ready and being where they needed me at the time, and just the timing of everything, trying to get everything together. And it was a lot of fun. And then afterwards. Um, um, Mr. McMahon had a, a big party for everyone, a big dinner party, and everybody had a good time. And uh, it was just, it was totally different. And I didn't realize then until after I, I watched it that um, how big it was. And um, I was kind of young then, you know, you don't think about that. I just think, just go to, the, you know, do my, my job. And, yep. and Wendy was wonderful to wrestle against. And um, she uh, was a perfect pick to be with Cindy Lauper, you know, that was her personality, and um, she just, she's nice and tall, and she had that brightness about her, and, and she worked out hard for this uh, event, and um, I, I just thought it was, all in all, the, the, the star, I mean, the start of, you know, even things bigger, and, it, and there'll never be another one, WrestleMania one, no matter how many WrestleManias they have, there'll never be one as big as the first one, because that was a backbone for the other ones that came up, so... But they're all wonderful, and um, I'm just glad I was part of that and WrestleMania 10. So it was, uh, it was exciting, it was an exciting night. <laughs> well, it certainly was the beginning of, well, we're getting, what are we now, WrestleMania 30. So you were the ones responsible for bringing this all to life and creating a legacy for the new younger stars today. So they, they sure, are, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, some great athletes, great athletes up there. And um, uh, Vince Man wouldn't have anybody better than the great athlete, you know, and his, his products are just wonderful. And I try to, to watch it when I can and, and just reminisce back, you know, to when I was uh, privileged to be able to be on, you know, WrestleMania 1 and 10. That was a privilege, and uh, I was very grateful. And um, I, I hope that I did, you know, my best to entertain and, and make a lot of folks happy, you know, as, as a pro wrestler. I did my best, you know, to, to be a, a good entertainer. So, <laughs> I think you did a wonderful job at it, and I'm just speaking for myself, and I don't think anybody else would, would dare to say anything different if they watched your matches, the way you worked, 
the effort you put into the match, I think you thoroughly did your job and, and, and succeeded in entertaining every one of us. I, I, and I'm not trying to brown anybody up here. I'm just trying to be honest because that's the way I do it, put it straight across the board. And, and uh, those matches, in my opinion, were outstanding. Um, you did a great job there along with all the other men and women involved in, in professional wrestling then. Um, in addition to competing for the first WrestleMania, you were also part of the first Survivor Series. As one half of the women's tag team champions known as the Glamorous Girls, what are your memories of being part of the boom era in the early 80s? Um, I think it was just exciting. Uh, TV had just started getting real big for wrestling. It's, it was a whole different concept, you know, concept of... Um, what wrestling was about. Um, you, you went to different territories and did, you know, their local uh, TV for each place. But when you went to, when I went to work up in um, New York, it just seemed to get bigger and bigger, and uh, it, it changed. I, I know it changed, and the travel was a lot uh, stronger. But uh, I, I, I think I was just started the right era, and um, I'm just so grateful for it. It was just so much fun. I, I can't remember everything I've done. It's just been so much, and um, I'm just so grateful for anything I was able to be part of. Um, it, it was it was exciting. I, when I did the Glamour Girls, um, that was a whole different situation. <laughs> but I just want to bring something different in, and uh, I think it kind of changed a little bit for women's wrestling once the Glamour Girls and Bomb Angels come in the, the picture. And Survivor Series was uh, so much fun, um, you know, getting together and getting out there and, and being in there with 10 girls, that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, I, like, um, uh, I like the heart of the competition. I, I like to, um, <laughs> I don't know how to put it in words, but it was just, it was just a great experience, uh, that's all I can say. <laughs> well, it's, first of all, I get from you, it was fun. Secondly, you liked the work you were doing, you enjoyed the company you kept, and you all regardless of what types of matches or matches were there, uh, kind of had a job to do when everybody just did it. But I think the most important thing, and I, I try to tell some of the young professional wrestlers today on the indies or wherever I may be, that, you know, if you're not having fun doing this and you don't love it in your heart, then don't do it. Um, y you know, it's you've got to want to do this. You've got to want to be part of it. And I, I guess... You know, they all think it's about the money and reaching the top of the mountain. Um, but I think you... you not easy. <laughs> no, it's not. And I don't think they realize no. the climb. So my whole thing is, you know, if you're going to have the climb, you might as well and have some fun while you're climbing there. And God rest his soul, as, as Walter Killer Kowalski used to say, you know, shoot for the moon and on the way up you may grab a star. But you're having a lot of fun while you're taking the ride. And, and, and I think that that's good advice. And what you've said is is outstanding. Um, let um, me, go ahead, I'm sorry. Women, uh, the women I worked with back, back then, um, it was a whole different style. And then we got into the Glamour Girls and Bomb Angels. They got a little more faster pace. They brought a little bit of Japanese style in. And what we were shooting for was to hopefully bring Japanese girls over here and American girls over there to make a lot more work for everyone and uh, a lot more practice and uh but Survivor Series 1 was so exciting, and I respected everyone that was in the ring with us. And I always thought of my role as just, you know, who my opponent was, is just to, is to make them look the best as I can and, um, and, 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 and for the future, you know, because the future matters to keep the sport going. And I, I always thought of myself as a role model is, is to make the other talent look as best as I can, and uh, just keep it going. So, because um, I was there, so I wasn't worried about it, you know. So I, I, I've i enjoyed it, and I loved all the girls I've ever been able to be in the ring with. Um, I just have my little specialties now, and I try to, um, I really want to keep it going. And the girls wrestling in the ring today, like I've seen on TV, it's, uh, it's a little brighter. Uh, they've got a lot of talent. They're a little more probably uh, athletic than the days that I was in it. You know, it was more laid back back then. But, 
now you've got so much TV going on. And, you know, TV costs thousands a minute, you know. So if you're able to be on, you know, uh, uh, TV, that's that's a privilege, you know. So, um, But um, that was just great, Super Survivor Series. That was a great night. You know, I was, I was so excited about it. And I thought it turned out very well. I was on the peak of my career at the time and so energetic. <laughs> but now I like to just do, like, some training and just – travel just a little bit, you know, while I can. And I've took good care of myself. I've never really gotten hurt in the ring. Um, uh, I knew how to take my bumps. Um, uh, I just, I've taken good care of myself, and that's what I want to teach is is how to take care of yourself in the ring and just have fun doing it. You don't have to work as hard as some of them try to work, and they don't have to, you know, in wrestling, you know, and just be good at the entertainment part of it. Well, you opened the door when you started um, for those that you wanted to follow you uh, in the business. And by what you're saying and what you're doing now, you're continuing to blaze the trail for all the young women who want to follow in the same path that you traveled. Um, Advice, hard work, knowing how to bump and knowing how to protect yourself and knowing how to entertain. I I, I think that, you know what? You have never stopped giving back to the business, and I believe, at least in my words, that's commendable. Um, oh, thank you so much. I've had a few tell me that, but that just means a lot. It's well worth it. Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome. <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you another question. Uh, the 10th WrestleMania was back in Madison Square Garden. Here we are, back at the place again. I- I'd like to know, what was it like to come full circle back to New York City and try to win the championship back from the one and only Arandra Blaze. Oh, she's a tough cookie. She was <laughs> uh, very tough. <laughs> she was. She had been in Japan, and she was more my style. So um, I was excited about doing WrestleMania 10. Once I decided I would do it, um, I hadn't uh, prior to that that match uh, had wrestled in about a year. And when they'd asked me if I would do it, I. I kind of hesitated. I said, well, I just need some practice, just like anybody does when they do football and they have to practice. I have it in my head, but, you know, I just, I need to practice, you know, and especially when you get to TV like that, getting on major TV. And uh, so um, we were sent to uh, Europe and did some matches over there. I, I kind of got comfortable again and getting in the ring. And uh, so I, I knew uh, at this time what to expect. So it wasn't as hard for me, you know, or, or it wasn't too fast paced. It was more relaxed. The tenth one was, and um, I had a really uh, good time. Just did it and uh, got out. And um, I, I had been in a uh, accident like three weeks prior to that and got burnt real bad. And I had to. I couldn't even dress in my uh, normal uh, outfits. So I had to wear all black. I had to paint my face up real heavy and my hair was burnt and I didn't really look as good as I should have looked but it was just from that accident getting burned and um but I still uh, did it got through it and um I was in there to I wanted to to get Alondra uh as um strong a credibility as I could you know that's really all I cared about you know I've done been there and done that so um I just I wanted to have the best match she could possibly have and and um, she's a great athlete, and um, I don't know if she's still doing it much anymore or not. Uh, I haven't seen her, you know, around too much, but um, but she's a great athlete, and I, I enjoyed it. And I had had matches prior to um, with her in other um, locations, but um, it was exciting. But WrestleMania 10 was a little more relaxed and uh, more organized, uh, everybody knowing what to do, and it was just like going to a, a a normal uh, uh, TV event, you know, and it was a lot more relaxed. So it was easier for me. And but um, I, I I'll never forget those memories. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alondra, I was just a very very lucky person, you know. So. <laughs> you've been gifted. Your gift. You proved your worth, and you know you did what you love to do. And unlike yourself, Alondra Braze is no longer doing wrestling. Although once in a while she'll pop up on a website or make some crazy comments, um, she's basically, I think, uh, not doing a whole lot. Uh, I think she might make an appearance here and there, but but not a whole lot. Uh, my oh, pro- I- Go ahead. I'm Go ahead. sorry. 
Go ahead, hon. All right, I'm sorry. When you went to WCW now, why? Why was your name changed to Patty Stonegrinder? And what was it like to work under Vince Russo um, to Vince McMahon? Um, well, Vince McMahon's very professional. He, he knows where he's going and what he's doing. Uh, Vince Russo, um, to me, was too cartoonish. Um, I don't think in the prospect he knew too much about the wrestling business. I can assure you he didn't know the history of it. If you don't know the history of it, then why even be in it? And um, it, it was just too cartoonish and silly and... He wanted me to do some mud match, and I, I'd actually gone there to to wrestle uh, someone um, of um, I forgot her name, but um, but anyway, I, I had a match with someone, and he came up and said he wanted me to get in the mud with um, um, Lex Luger and uh, Miss Elizabeth, and I said, um, well, never mind what I said, but <laughs> it was pretty rough. <laughs> um, but uh, I didn't you. like it. And I said I'm not going to do it. I said I didn't. Um, I didn't ask to come here. I said, you asked me to come here, and um, I'm not going to do it. I'll just go back home. I'm, I'm here to do a match. I don't mind getting in there and, 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 and having a really good match and, and getting the other girls, you know, for credibility or whatever. I just want to have a good match, a good old school match. And, and they were just uh, against that. You know, I was, uh, it was false advertised to me, and I wouldn't even gone if I'd known about that. Because I'm like, you know, a mud match. And, um, nope. That it, it, it got pretty intense, and uh, I ended up not doing anything, really. <laughs> that, was, that was it. I just there and went back home. I didn't really um, uh, care for working there. Um, I was in w, um, WWE or WWF at the time. Um, uh, it was, I was treated with respect, and um, I, was, I, was, I knew when I went in what I was going to do, and, and I gave respect back, so... There'll never be nothing like, you know, uh, WWE because they're so far advanced and know what they're doing. they got great product. And, I don't, I'm, you know, I, I'm just so I'm happy for them. I hope that it, it continues and gets bigger and bigger. And so, I think it will, uh, unlike our friend Vince Russo, who believes that everything needs to be funny, comical, and cartoonish. And, you know, you said it. I think you summed it all up. Uh, if you don't know about the business and you don't care to learn about this business and you want to make fun of people, do it with somebody else because the real professionals aren't going to play this game. And, and Vince, no, I don't hate the I don't hate the guy or anything. I just didn't respect his uh, qualifications. You know what position he was in, and I could have thought of some better. You know, uh, folks that could have been in that position he was in that could have um, appreciated a lot more. And uh, I think it would have turned out a lot better of a. Of, of events that have been done the way it should have been done. And uh, it was just too cartoonish for me, and that's my opinion. It might not be some other folks' opinions. I think it, uh, with his his ways, uh, a lot of the guys um, trying to get in the business, um, it, it kind of ruined it for him. And uh, I just don't think he, he really cared. He just um, he just uh, tried to make it something else of what it, what it would should be. And... Uh, I, I just didn't care for it, and I, I didn't have a very good day that day. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand why, and I'll tell you this. Uh, I think you're to be commended for the attitude and the action that you took because, one, you gave respect. You should have gotten respect. That didn't happen. So you know what? In your case, um, I think you made the right decision, and who am I? But that was the right decision to make. And I think the decision you made, probably regardless of who was there, you sent a message loud and clear. This is about professional wrestling. This is about respect for the business and respect for the individuals who are involved in the business. I'm all for that. I'm not about getting involved in your cartoonish little ideas where you get to do your fantasies of mud wrestling or whatever. So in my book, I think that's a 10. You did the right thing. Well, um, they wanted me to do Patty Stone Grinder. I don't know why. I said, well, no matter what you do, I'm still going to be Leilani out there. Yep. I'm still, it's still going to be me, yep. you know, <laughs> no matter what name you change. But I went ahead and did it, and I, I didn't like the way it looked, but I still did the same thing I always do, the same type work I always do. It doesn't never change. 
You know, you just can't change somebody overnight like that. I don't know what the purpose of it was. I don't know to this day what the difference was, you know, to change my name, um, change my character. But I did it. I did it. And I did it. So I did it. So wow. <laughs> it, was, it was okay, but that was about as far as I went with it. Um, I didn't care if they changed the name and, and my outfits or what they wanted. My work was still the same, you know, so... Uh, well, like I was ahead of us, uh, Kai Stone Grinder now. <laughs> <laughs> His character, you know, and everything, you know, so it doesn't matter. It can't, you know, it didn't, I don't know why they did it. I really don't know this day, but I went ahead and did it, though, and, um, but that's as far as I went. Is I changed, let them change the name and, and my, um, character out there, but, um, it, it didn't suit me, but it doesn't matter. I still was Leilani out there. So yes. Everybody just call me Leilani. We're screaming Leilani. It doesn't matter, you know. No, you are. So that's who their you stupidity. Are. They wasted TV time on that, you know. So it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> I was just there. <laughs> well, before we wrap it up, I have one last question for you, and I, I think you've probably been asked this question a million times. In your opinion, what do you believe is the future of women's wrestling, and what do you believe? What do you think is the future for Lalani Kai? Uh, women's wrestling is going to get stronger. I, I think it's a, a turnover. I think everything goes in phases. And um, I, I recommend anybody that wants to, any woman that wants to do it, try for it. And for me, I'm going to train and, and teach as hard as I can, as far as I can, for every kind of knowledge I ever learned around the world. And... Um, I, I, I recommend it for anybody that really wants to do it because now it's, now is the time. It's, it's really hot on TV. And, um, if you're lucky, you might get a, a good break, you know. So I would take, I would ask, tell them to take the chance, you know, for a women's wrestling. Because right now there's, there's great athletes up there. Even the women are great athletes. And I can see things that I, when I watch them that could be a little, uh, different, a little more calmer, um, uh, just, Little, little things I see, but there's girls up there right now that are, are just, you know, they're wonderful and they look great. And But um, I just think they need a woman's touch, and that's me. I agree with <laughs> I that. I can do that. I, I agree <laughs> with that. And what's in, what does the future hold for you, Lalani Kai? Uh, being a great uh, professional wrestling teacher. That's all I really ever wanted to do. From the time I was like 25, I been wanting to teach it and I actually did when I was in the ring but that's my goal is to, to teach and that's going to be at the triple four academy and um and you can go on the website it's um triple four academy.com and we we got a great facility like it's a co-ed but we all work with each other but with the women if they want to be just with uh, another trainer woman that will be me I don't have to be around any guys if they want and um I, I, that's, I'm just goal, my goal is just the school. I was there today, and I'm excited, and I just want to build it to be the, the best school I can possibly make it and most comfortable, and, and it's really in a great location. And I'm really excited about it. And, uh, and, and once in a while, I like to go on the road and, um, and still do a little bit of wrestling, not a whole lot, and do some conventions, and I keep up with the fans as much as I can. And, um, just to keep this business going because I love it and it's the most wonderful thing in, in the whole world to be. And that's where my goal is, is just to, to, to be a teacher and, and help uh, regroup, you know, um, future talent, and that's very important to me. It's got a lot of land and uh, it's got a, um, we have a track there to, for running and, um, uh, we, we're going to build on to it more, but right now it's, it's ready. It's ready to be opened, and I'm excited about well, it. Well, if I get down there, you have my word that I'll get somebody to get me there so that you and I can have a chat and I can take a look at the facility and, and maybe even have a bite to eat. Um, sure. <laughs> I, I just want to say this from me to you. I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to chat with me, and I really do mean what I'm saying. It has been an honor and a privilege for me, John Cena Sr., to be able to interview, in my own words, the one, the only, the great, Alani Kai. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, too, and all your listening. Thank you. All right.